kingdom. So even though we're a small community, uh, we can still proclaim Christ is risen. Truly is risen. And we can proclaim that he is in our midst in just a few weeks with Pentecost. The great message of the myrrh bearers is that if we bear Christ within us, we can bear him to the world and proclaim that message. The scripture tells us that on the day of his crucifixion when he was entombed, placed within the tomb, Pilate marveled if he was already dead and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And we read of Joseph and he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a new tomb. And he rolled a stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary beholding where he was laid. And the scripture says, and when the Sabbath was passed, uh, when, when it was all done, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Ina alipsosin afton. This is the Sunday that we celebrate the myrrh bearers. So what they did was they were the first ones to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. The good news that Christ had conquered death. The good news that God had turned our sorrows into joy. The good news that the bars of Hades were broken and the door to paradise was open. The good news that Adam's transgression was covered and the atonement was made. The good news that Christ had liberated our race and given us the inheritance which our forefather forsook for a mess of pottage like Esau. The good news that the debt that we justly owed was paid. The good news that the death which we incurred, he has restored life to us. When we have experienced this within ourselves, we can proclaim this. That's why we read the epistle as well. So in the epistle, what do we have? It says, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And the scripture says, And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. It multiplied greatly because, number one, the, the priests and the, well, the bishops at that time, it was James, they gave themselves to prayer to the ministry of the word, and that nourishes the disciples. But also because we read of those that served and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. He was a murderer in that sense. He was full of God's grace and because he was full of God's grace, he could proclaim the good news. So my one challenge to us today is let us be like the murderers, bringing grace to others and myrrh smells nice, doesn't it? This incense is, is a nice, it's, it's a tangible reminder that spiritual offerings are pleasing to God. David said, let my prayer be set before you as incense. It's pleasing to God. And the Greek word is osmin evodias, a pleasing scent, uh, offering or uh, sense or smell odor and when we are in communion with God and we bring that gospel to people we have grace and the gospel is adorned as St. Paul says uh, we have a cosmisa we have given it adornment that's where you get the word cosmetic we make the gospel pleasant to people when we're pleasant ourselves with the grace of God. And we are myrrh bearers. We're bringing myrrh, uh, a 
pleasant odor with the gospel, bringing Christ to others. So let us bear Christ within us and the grace that he offers, and thereby we can proclaim his word. So when we bear Christ within, we can bear Christ to the world. May God bless us and keep us as we proclaim Christ is risen. Truth is risen.